We're now going to talk about indexes and scales. Index is basically a quantitative score which is constructed by applying a set of rules that combines two or more variables in order to reflect a more general construct. Now, we don't use indexes as often in the field of communication, but a social science where indexes are used very routinely is economics. Here, there you see indexes like the consumer price index, another very popular index called the Big Mac index. What these indexes basically do is uh, the consumer price index looks at a basket of goods, which is two or more variables. So it looks at a basket of products that people purchase in a marketplace. So let's say you know you go to um, let's say your Buffalo, you the the Federal Reserve in the United States will count three or four products, which they call essential products. So it could be bread, milk, eggs, and they will call and do a survey to find the prices, the prevailing prices in the neighborhood or in an area or in a region. And they would do this across the entire nation in order to see what the consumer price index is for essentials. They can do this and compare it with the studies that are similarly done in other nations. It gives the Federal Reserve, for instance, a gauge on inflation rates. That is, are things getting more expensive? Are things cheaper? Likewise, there are many indexes. The Big Mac index is another index which is used to compare the prices of products across nations. So a simple way of doing it is to compare the price of a Big Mac in the United States versus the price of a Big Mac in, let's say, Europe versus the price of a Big Mac in Singapore. These are ways in which you can compare to see whether a Big Mac costs more in one country than the other. And if it does, the reason for it is because the currency rate or the exchange rate of that nation is either weaker or stronger than the U.S. dollar. So it's an indirect gauge, an indirect index of the, uh, the economic status of that particular nation from a balance of payment standpoint. Likewise, we have many other indexes like the socioeconomic status index, the Case-Shiller index, which is a real estate index that's also used quite popularly. You can click on some of these links or you can do some searches online to see and learn more about indexes. We don't do or use a lot of indexes in the field of communication. Uh, what we do use are scales, right? And scales are very important to understand because we're now going to focus on how scales are constructed, what they mean, and how they're used. So uh, what's a scale? Now in order to understand a scale, let's begin with a very simple question. Let's say you wanted to measure quality of life in a survey. So you want to go and ask people in the city of Buffalo uh, or in New York City, uh, what is the quality of your life? A simple way of doing this would be to just ask a question. Well, how would you rate your overall quality of life? The problem is that this one generic question, although it sounds appropriate, doesn't get to the multiple facets of quality of life. Quality of life has many different aspects. It's got standard of living. It's got quality of health care. It's got standards of sanitation. It's got cost of living. It's got availability of jobs. It's got types of freedom. So it's a multifaceted concept that together makes up the construct quality of life. So in order to better capture it, what we need to do is come up with a way to measuring for measuring all these multiple aspects. And this is what is called as a scale. So a scale is a way in which we assign numbers to individual items such that the values in combination can be summed up to represent the intensity or magnitude of the construct. So for instance, if you think of quality of life, uh, we may have different facets to it, and each facet may have different weights. So for some people, schooling might be more important. For some people, uh, sanitation might be more important. Some people's safety might be universally important. So each of these items need to either have some kind of a value that we give or some kind of a value that the individual gives based on his or her prefer preference. Now, how we create these items and how we assign weights to them is through a process of what is called as scaling, right? And scaling is, in by definition, the construction of a measure based on associating qualitative judgments, which are statements about a specific construct with quantitative metric units, which is the weights that people give. Typically, scaling, the use of a scale, yields a single numerical score that represents the construct of index. 
uh, construct of interest. Uh, most importantly, scaling is a process and it's not the same as a response scale. So we always differentiate between scales or multi-item multi scales and scaling and a response scale. So what's a scale, right? So here's an example of a scale for people's views or attitude towards immigration. If you look at these items, there are three items, three statements, three qualitative statements, and we call them items. Each item, if you look at them, has a certain numerical value, and this numerical value is a certain quotient of intensity. So, you look at the first statement, uh, are you willing to permit immigrants to live in your country? That, when you compare it with the second statement, are you willing to permit immigrants to live in your neighborhood? And compare that to the third statement, would you let your child marry an immigrant? you some kind of a cumulative rule such that if you agree to the third statement in that list, you're more likely to agree to the second and the first. If you agree to only the second, you're more likely to have agreed to the first. So scaling is the assignment of qualitative objects related to a construct of interest to quantitative numbers based on a rule. How these rules are created or what rules are used is something we're going to talk about in so one of the, in the subsequent uh, lectures. Here's another example of a scale. This is a scale that measures how people seek information while purchasing a new consumer product. This scale uses a one to five response scale. So here is your response scale. It goes one strongly agree if the person says two. They, they somewhat agree with the statement if the person is going to disagree. They can somewhat disagree saying four or they can strongly disagree by saying five are some of the questions or the individual items so here you see six different statements now when the statements all relate to a particular construct within a single scale we call those statements items right so we don't call them individual questions we call them items and together here is a scale with six items that measure how people ask or choose or find information when purchasing a new consumer product and the questions go, you know, do you, I would ask the sales, you know, do you agree or disagree with the following statements? I would ask the salesperson a number of questions about a product. I would seek out information. And each statement, each item is scored on a one to five response scale. In the next lecture, we'll talk about how or what these response scales are and how they're different from the process of scaling.